Hey everyone, my name is Travis from creativegrenade.com and pixelzombies.com and today's tutorial we're going to be going over the Pathfinder tool inside of Adobe Illustrator. Um, just about any logo design that you've ever seen has definitely used this tool, um, but for people just starting out inside of Illustrator, it's actually a pretty um, foreign tool, so I want to go over it, and uh, I'm assuming that if you're watching this, you know the basics of Illustrator, like the pen tool and uh, how paths and strokes work and things of that nature. If you're not, um, check our channel uh, for some tutorials on how to do that, and uh, so let's jump in and, and explain the Pathfinder tool. Um, Using the Pathfinder, we're going to be able to create things like these like perfect highlights on top of logos. Um, this is a logo that uh, I did, um, and the sketch was by uh, Summer Ard. Um, so let's come over to a blank document, and um, let's go ahead and bring up the Pathfinder tool. Um, if you don't have it in your sidebar here, you're going to come to Window and click on Pathfinder. Um, and what I definitely recommend, because if you're a user of Illustrator, you're definitely going to use it almost every time you open Illustrator. So uh, I like to drag the Pathfinder into my sidebar here, and that way I can uh, access it whenever I need to. So let's go ahead and explain how it works. So let's go ahead and draw out a triangle, and uh, let's make a duplicate of that, and uh, we'll just rotate it something like this. Um, the Pathfinder, for the most part, needs two or more uh, shapes to actually do anything. Um, let me go ahead and make this one a different color. Let's do like an orange. So, um, for example, if I have these two shapes and I go ahead and select both of those by clicking and dragging to select them two or clicking one, holding shift, and then left clicking the other, I now have both selected. Um, in the Pathfinder window, the first one is called Unite. Now, if I click on this, what you'll see is it actually takes both of those shapes and creates one shape out of them. And it goes, uh, it takes the, the top layer's color and goes and applies it to the, uh, all the shapes. So that's the first one is Unite. Really powerful. Um, and to give you a real world example, the ear on this, um, uh, on this panther, for example, um, I didn't take the pin tool, you know, draw this out and then draw the ear like so and then keep going right what I did was I had one nice smooth path from the back neck area down to the brow um, for example and then once I was all done with that I went ahead and drew out my ear like so so now I have two paths I select both of those right and I hit unite so now it's one solid piece as you can see here so things like teeth as well, you know, um, if this is the kind of nose area, I would then draw the teeth starting from maybe like right here, coming out and then in. Okay, now I've got two layers. I select them both, hit unite. So um, you don't want to unite until you're pretty much sure that that's what you want your shape to be. Otherwise, you're kind of stuck. You're, you're not really stuck with it. You can still use the direct selection tool to kind of move things around. Um, but I wouldn't unite anything until you're pretty much sure of it. Um, so to come over and uh, to do the other um, things in the Pathfinder, if I select these two shapes again and I do the second one, it's called minus front. So it's going to do probably exactly what you think. It's going to take the top layer and it's going to subtract it out. So let's do it. Now, as you can see, it, it took the top layer and it's going to minus the front out of the bottom layer. So you can see now this is transparent. It essentially, it's like a cookie cutter. You know, it cuts through that shape. Um, the third one is intersect. So um, as you can see in the middle here, we kind of have this like third triangle where the two triangles intersect. So intersect essentially creates a single path out of that intersection information. Um, the fourth one is going to knock out the intersection. So if I do that, you can see now it's essentially knocked out and it's now transparent beneath. Um, one of my favorites that I use a lot, and this is the one that I use for shading, is divide, which is on the bottom left here. So if I select both of these and I hit divide, I clicked it, but nothing really seems to happen. Uh, one thing you can uh, right away notice is that they were now grouped together. Um, and if you zoom in, you can see a very, I don't know if you can see it or not, but if you can, there's a very, very faint white line right here. So what it actually did is it took every piece of the paths that are touching each other and essentially used them all as like a knife, like a slice. So um, again, when you hit divide, it groups it. So if we right click and hit ungroup, 
we can now start selecting these individual pieces and as you can see it essentially just cuts them anywhere there's an intersection of the paths it's going to cut it and it's going to divide it into different pieces so in terms of shading uh, to show you how that works so let's say we had a circle and we wanted to essentially create like a, sh a shadow right well you wouldn't want to sit here and use the pen tool to try to you know perfectly align that circle again it's going to be really difficult to do um, something like that right it doesn't line up uh, it's not a perfect circle on the right hand side as you can see but we need that like perfect circle so that's where the pathfinder comes in so we have our original circle I'm gonna hit uh, control C control V to make a copy and just for reference um, I'm just gonna change the color so we can see it um, we need to basically line this up where we want our shade now I'm gonna make it bigger because I don't want that big of a shadow so what I'm looking at is what I'm going to be left with, right? When I select these two, this little orange piece down here is essentially going to be the extra piece that I need to convert to a darker orange for that shadow. So let me hit divide. Okay, it happened. Um, it's all grouped, so we need to right click and hit ungroup. And now we can essentially delete what we don't need. We don't need this, and we don't need the, uh, or we do need this top layer. This is our original orange. And now we're left with this little piece down here. So we would change this one down to a darker orange like that. So now we have that perfect shade. So again, real world example, um, on this panther for example, if we delete all this shading out, uh, let's say we want to add that highlight, we can take the pen tool, start on the outside of the path that you're gonna cut through, because if you don't, it's not gonna cut the right way. So again, if I'm adding a highlight to this top purple portion, I need to start on the outside of it left click, uh, lay down a, a point, and then draw out where I want that path to slice. Um, so now if I select the two, hit divide, and hit ungroup, you see what happens if I don't have it as a stroke? It's actually taking the, the full fill, and it's actually, even though I didn't complete the path, it's taking it as if I did complete the path, like it was a circle, for example. So if we get Control Z back out, we need to change this to no fill and no stroke. So now if you zoom in here, this is just path information. You can see the blue line that we're gonna to use to cut, but there's no fill and there's no stroke. So now if I select my base layer and I hold shift and I find my path and I select both of them, you see I have both of them now selected. I hit divide. I then have to go ahead and ungroup them. So now I have two pieces. And then I can just take this top piece and change it to the color that we need, which is, you know, a lighter purple for like a highlight. So that's how you do highlighting and how to make things line up perfectly with that base layer without trying to redraw on top of it. Um, so that's divide. Um, to go over a few of the other ones, I, I don't really ever use these. Um, this one is trim, which I think what it does, and if you hover over it, it actually tells you. No, no, it doesn't. It looks like what this is doing is it's taking the top layer and it's trimming the other layer. So if I hit that, um, oh, I hit divide, sorry. If I, uh, if I select these two and hit trim and hit ungroup, it's like taking the top layer and using only the top layer as a cut. So that's pretty cool. Um, if I select both of them again and do, what's this one, merge. Isn't that the same thing as unite? I don't know. <laughs> um, and then this one is crop. So it looks like what that's doing is it's taking the intersection, filling it, and then doing something weird with this other one. Again, it's like no fill, no stroke. Again, I, I, I don't, I haven't ever found myself in a situation where I'd use any of these. This one is outline, so it takes every path you have and converts it to strokes. It looks like, and cuts it. So it's doing a divide plus changing the fill to a stroke. So um, I'm learning with you here because I've never even clicked on these. Uh, minus back, okay, that makes sense. So it's whatever whatever shape is in the back. So like, again, if this is that shaped in the back, it's gonna minus out that back one from the top one. So it's the opposite of minus front. Um, so that is pretty much it. That's the Pathfinder. Um, to give you some examples, uh, someone had uh, brought up like a Panda logo with some negative space. Let me just, let me just try to find that logo real quick. Um, just to give you a, uh, a really quick look on, here it is. This is a panda logo done by uh, Dark Matters on logopond.com. So, uh, you know, 
he, I, I'm almost certain he didn't sit here or she, uh, you know, click and actually drew each of these pieces to make this like perfectly uh, circle like negative space. So what you can do is you can essentially create your circle, right? Um, we're going to create our two ears. bear with me for a little bit um, and then let's go ahead and draw our little arms and for this I am going to use a stroke I'm going to bump the stroke weight uh, way up and then I'm going to turn the stroke uh, cap to around for these little arms um, let's actually just decrease the size a little bit here um, and I'm not I'm not copying this logo. I'm I'm just I, I'm I'm just copying it for educational purposes. I'm not going to use this. Um, I did need to take my stroke, and it's uh, good that we note this because I do want to note that if you take a fill and I have a stroke, so you can see this one's a fill, this one's a stroke. If I try to select both of those and do some Pathfinder information, it's going to convert everything to a stroke. Or I believe if the stroke is on top, I wonder if it's going to convert it to a path. No, it's still a stroke. So you need to take the two strokes and go to Object, Expand, and go ahead and expand the fill and the stroke. Hit OK. That just converted them into paths, just like if, as if we drew it with a pen tool. So now that we have all that stuff, we're going to select everything, right? And we're going to hit Divide. Then we're going to hit Ungroup. And now what we need to do is we simply need to delete the middle portion. We need to delete these little pieces of the ears, delete these pieces of the arms. And there you go. Now we have that perfect, perfect circle negative space. And then, of course, you know, we draw in our eyes and our little nose. And uh, that's how you create this, this kind of effect um, so that it's like perfect shapes and negative space and things like that. You wouldn't want to sit there, draw all these paths, then draw a white circle on top. That's not the right way to do it, especially if you need negatives or if you need uh, transparency. So as you can see, you know, if I wanted to put this on a reverse background, like black with white, uh, we can do that without trying to change colors. So um, that's the Pathfinder. I hope that um, you learned something from that. I know I learned some of these new ones down here. Again, probably won't ever use them, but still good to know what they do. Um, if you have any questions at all, as always, please leave a comment down below. Thank you very much.